So we're here with Jan Lummers, the uh, CEO of RP3 Rowing. So Jan, can you tell us a bit about how this e-race series was developed? Yeah, sure. Nice. Uh, we have this uh, e-race series uh, developed uh, a long time ago already, uh, before uh, the coronavirus uh, got into it. Uh, it was more that uh, we like to have, uh, let's say, more competition uh, moments for the professional rowers. At the moment, it is only, the, let's say, the six times World Cups and Euro Cups and whatever. And besides that, they don't have so many moments to see where they stand to, to their competition. Uh, so because RP3 is uh, like similar on rowing on the water, we thought we might give them some more moments. And this is how this e-racing uh, and e-league series uh, popped up. It's also to attract more rowers into the into the rowing business, like say the indoor rowers, uh, which are now uh, doing CrossFit uh, and all other rowers in, in, in gyms, might be more attracted to indoor rowing uh, on this way. Give it more fun. Yeah, great. So can you explain a little bit behind the technology of how these races work? Yeah, yeah. What, what we do is we got, uh, the, let's say, our monitor is a tablet. So we are connected uh, through the internet. And what we do is the tablet uh, makes the race. So you can set up the race on the tablet and, and connect everybody with in a virtual room. So we create a virtual room, which you create a code. And wherever you are in the world, if you put that code in, you come into this room and you can race. Uh, and what we can do in that uh, setup, we can make boats. So we can have singles, we can have uh, a pair or four or an eight. And we connect them as a boat in software. And also what we did with UW and the, and the Dutch guys is also connect them mechanically. That is really, uh, really about. Uh, next to that, we put uh, an iPhone or, or an Android phone, which gives the live stream. And in the back end, uh, we uh, put the graphics and the video uh, together and make it, uh, make it like uh, a real race. So we have Oli Deidler and Sverre Nielsen, the uh, gold and silver medalists from the world champs of last year coming together to race each other. So what does it look like? How fast are they going to go tomorrow? Are they going to be close to on water speed or what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be, we put in a boat class, we're going to weight them in. So it's uh, the weight and the boat type will depend, uh, will make the drag which we calculate in our software. So. If, if you're very happy, uh, you will have a, a, a bigger drag than, uh, than if you're lightweight. So this is all calculated into our software. So they should supposed to be on the, the on water times uh, should arise. Uh, so it's not the erging, it's not a 528. We should expect, we should expect more like the 630, uh, let's say the fastest boat time we have now in, in the single uh, from Robbie Manson. Yeah, so we'll get these two athletes, they're both going to be weighed and then that weight data gets put in, tallied together with their score and we're expecting something in the 630, 640 range for their race. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly how it is in, in, a, in a normal race on the water. Uh, your weight and uh, your physics uh, turn into uh, having a, a better or a worse time. Uh, so this should, uh, should end up somewhere around where you say 630, 645. Great. Wow. Okay. Well, um, we're looking forward to the race. So uh, thanks, Jan, for your time. And uh, I think we're out. Me too. Well, let's have fun tomorrow. <laughs>
They're on the RP3 rowing machine. They're looking at on water speed time. So they're really not sure what their strategy is. And both of them were saying early in an interview before this race that they're gonna look to see what the other one does in the first thousand meters and then make their move. So right now they're crossing that 300 meter mark. Both of them looking strong. You can see their nice relaxed faces here. Ollie's Eiler just pushing away. And then we get Sverry Nielsen coming back into the picture here. They're really going stroke for stroke here. As we come into the first 500 meter mark, we're gonna be looking at those split times, trying to understand how this actually compares to on water racing. So in an on water race, we'd expect them to go across in about 137. So they're going just a bit slower than that. Now we're seeing they're coming across the 500 meter mark here, going at about a 145 through that first 500 meter mark. So that's relatively slow in a men's single, but I think both of these athletes are really looking to see what the other one's gonna do here and then decide what move to make. So, you know, just to give a bit of a background on these two athletes, Ollie Zeidler, current world champion in the men's single skulls, just a dominating force really coming up. He's very young, 23 years of age. He weighed in this morning at 103 kilos. So just a massive, massive force in the sport of rowing. And on the right side of your screen, Sverry Nielsen, silver medalist from the World Rowing Championship. So we've got the top two athletes coming out of 2019 here, going head to head in this E-race. And we can see them as they're coming through, they're coming into that thousand meter mark, going across 750 right now. And we just see Ollie with just a little bit of a lead over Sperry Nielsen. They're just kind of looking, seeing what the other one's gonna do, but both of them remaining pretty calm through the second 500 meters. They're just trying to find that rate. If you compare it to their world championship race, of last year, this is kind of how they did it too. They were starting off strong, really fast out of the blocks, and then that second 500 meters was relatively slow for both of them, trying to come down, find that rhythm, find that rate, and as we're gonna cross into that third 500 meters, that's when the pain really comes across the faces of these two athletes. That's when it's gonna start to hurt. So now we're going into that second, into that second half, of this race, we're gonna look at the time here. A bit slow, they're coming across that thousand meter mark at 326. So in a men's single, that's a relatively slow race, but let's see if they start to pick it up as they come through that third 500. They see where the other one's at. Sperry Nielsen needing to make a bit of a move here if he wants to get back on Ollie Zeidler. Ollie saying in his interview yesterday that he was gonna try and really pull out all the stops in that second thousand meters so let's see yeah we can just see him starting to raise his rate here he's starting to breathe a little harder it's really interesting to see that stroke of Ollie Zeidler a little bit shorter through the front end he stays quite upright with his body he's got two meters to play with so he's got quite a bit of length to play with play, play with he doesn't have to extend quite as much as Barry Nielsen does but we see through that third 500 meters Ollie Zeidler really pulling out the stops Sverry Nielsen taking it up here, trying to get back on him. And we're just having a little bit of a breakup in the video from Sverry Nielsen. So it's hard to tell if he's really staying with Ollie, but right now I have him just about 30 meters behind Ollie Zeidler in this third 500 meters. These two incredible athletes, both young, both coming up into the field in the last couple of years. Ollie Zeidler really only starting international rowing in 2018, coming from a swimming background. And Sperry Nielsen has been on the rowing scene since 2012, but he's really started to come into his own in the last year. So it's really amazing to see these two, their Olympic season postponed for another year. This is their one race of the season at the moment, and they're absolutely going for it. They're gonna come into the last 500 meters here. We see Ollie Zeidler just with about a 15 meter lead ahead of Sperry Nielsen, and the question is gonna be, just like at the World Championships, who has the power coming in to these last 500 meters? And we can absolutely see they're starting to pull out the stops. I love it, their faces stay calm. They're really picking up the rate here. You see Ollie Zeidler with that nice short stroke, just driving through the legs there. And then Sperry Nielsen with a bit of a longer stroke, pushing through his back here. We're gonna come into the last 350 meters and you can really see Ollie is going for it. He wants to win this race, but Sperry is not letting him get away. So we're gonna see who has that sprint into the final part of this race, looking at a totally normal on water boat speed time 
different for these two. It's the first time they've ever done this on an indoor rowing machine. And we've got Ollie Zeidler with about 25 meter advantage ahead of Sperry Nielsen coming into the final sprint. Yes, and now we see the pain on their face. You can see Ollie Zeidler just starting to grunt here. We see Sperry Nielsen trying to make his comeback as we're coming into the final meters. We see Ollie Zeidler really taking advantage of his length here, really taking advantage of that big body and he's pushing through into the last 150 meters. We've got him just 60 meters up on Sperry Nielsen. Can he come back in these final strokes? It's down to the wire here. Last 100 meters for Oli Zeidler pushing it out, coming to the finish line and I think this one's going to go the way of the German today into the final 50 meters. Last few strokes for Oli Zeidler and see that finish line in sight. He sees that finish line in sight and he's Pushing through it, last two strokes, and I'm going to call it for Ollie Zeidler, just ahead of Sperry Nielsen. What a race for these two. We see them both coming over, hanging on top of their ergs. We've got Sperry Nielsen just six seconds behind Ollie Zeidler. Ollie Zeidler coming in at a 6.43.7, so that's a very quick... 2k time on water 2k time in fact that's just slightly slower than his fastest time ever on the water so we're really looking at that to compare what a race between Ollie Zeidler we see him just climbing off the erg there and we see Terry Nielsen also finding his spot on the floor we're going to catch up with both of these guys once they've caught their breath so check in back in a few minutes thanks for watching the first ever RP3E race I am not sending anything at the moment. So. Okay, that's great. But you don't hear it on your side. Yeah, I hear it, but. Ah, uh. okay. I don't. I don't know where that would be coming from. <laughs> okay, now it's gone. Hey, Sperry. Hey. <laughs> so I'll just ask you just two questions, um, Mark. I hope we're recording here. <laughs> All right, so um, we're here with Sperry. Um, Sperry, can you tell me how your race went? Oh, it was, uh, it was all right. Actually, it went uh, according to plan. We had some uh, technical difficulties, so I couldn't really see Ollie and uh, how far he was ahead. So I just followed my, my own race plan and yeah, I actually just followed it uh, just as planned. So it was, it was all right. Yeah, nice. Good. And uh, how does this affect your motivation going forward? No, it's really good. I, I, uh, I actually really uh, like the concept and uh, it would be really fun to, uh, if, uh, if this kind of was just open to the public and uh, you could just go in on the uh, Row Perfect app and then, gen then just connect with, uh, with another rower or, another, or a competitor or something and then just do some training or do some pieces or something through the virtual uh, virtual racing app. That would be uh, that would be very good. Yeah, nice, cool. Hey, well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we'll let you cool down. But um, look forward to seeing you race again soon. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks, Mary. Bye. Bye. Oh, was that it? Yeah, that was it. You're done. done? Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'll see you. Okay, see you. Oh, yeah, connecting. Yeah, yes. there you are. Hey, thanks. Thanks for hopping back on. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, so we just are going to do the same thing again. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so we're here with Ollie Zeidler, post race winner of the first RP3 E race. Ollie, can you tell me how the race went for you? Uh, yes, it was a hard race. We had got some connection problems, but the rest of the race was 
pretty good, even if I wasn't sure if where we started after the first in the first 250. So I missed two two or three strokes, but don't mind. All you right. come back in, and then and and we're off for the rest of the race. Yes, correct. Yeah. And I'm pretty happy with the result now, and also with my with my pace through the race. It was was good. Yeah, did you know? Actually, this is very close to your fastest on water race ever. Your yeah. fastest on water race was six forty three twenty nine, if I'm right, and this was just uh, not even a second slower. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was Lucerne in 2018, the final, but uh, yeah. I was, I'm not sure what the, what the time was there. But it was yeah, pretty satisfying with the. With, I'm pretty satisfied with, with the time, definitely. Nice. And how does this affect your motivation going forward? Yeah. Um, it's good for the motivation, of course, because this is the might be the only race this year, and staying unbeaten this year is a pretty good feeling. But I'm open for more um, more competition, of course. <laughs> nice, good. All right, thanks so much for your time, Ollie. Enjoy your holiday. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Mark, did we get it? <laughs>